Hello, this is Kate from DailyTarotGirl.com and this is your weekly tarot card reading. And I'm using the Everyday Witch Tarot for this reading. So I'm going to start by drawing three cards. And each card is going to represent a portion or a segment of the upcoming week. And my intention here is just to get a general overview of the, the energies, the themes, the opportunities that we can expect in the week ahead. So this first card represents Monday and Tuesday of the upcoming week. And here we have the Ten of Wands. And the Ten of Wands shows someone who is really struggling. They're, go they're going uphill and they're trying to, to drag all this stuff with them. The message with this card is you really want to get good at saying no this week. So you may be starting off the week feeling maybe overburdened, overwhelmed, like you have a lot on your plate. Maybe you're trying to do everything yourself. And this card encourages you to ask for help, to maybe delegate certain things or put certain things on the back burner. Ask yourself, is this really important? Does this need to be done right now? Really prioritize, because quite often when we get overwhelmed, it's because we're trying to do all this stuff that really when we think about it isn't super important. There's probably maybe only one or two important things that really need to be done and the other things maybe can be put on the back burner. So this is about prioritizing, possibly delegating, and also asking for help and not taking on more stuff this week. So not agreeing to things if you don't have the time or the energy, um, you know, being able to say no without feeling guilty. Um, let's move on to the next card. The next card is for Wednesday and Thursday, so the middle of the week. And here we have the Empress and the Empress has almost a totally opposite energy to the Ten of Wands. The Ten of Wands is about difficulty and struggle and feeling bogged down. Whereas the Empress is, she's so relaxed and she's very zen-like. She just lets everything unfold around her and she just relishes in the beauty and the fertility of the earth around her. And she doesn't stress about anything. So I love to read the middle card as not just being about you know the middle of the week, but this is often the central theme of the week. This is the one powerful energy that is going to be present throughout the entire week. And the Empress is really encouraging you to chill out a little more. She's encouraging you to get out of your own way, to take a step back and kind of let things take their course. With the Ten of Wands, the first card we have, there is this almost controlling energy. Like you want to control everything. You want to do everything. You want to make sure everything gets done right. You want to have, you know, an effect on everything. You want to, maybe you have this agenda that you want to, that you want to, to go off perfectly. And the Empress is saying, you're going to torture yourself if you do that. So take a step back and trust that other people know what they're doing. Trust that everything that happens needs to happen for some reason or other. It may not make sense at the time, but everything that's unfolding is how it's meant to unfold. So kind of maybe stepping back from some of your more controlling tendencies and just just relishing in the beauty of life, appreciating things, showing gratitude, and just letting things unfold and see, see what happens when you take that approach to life. See if that changes things for you. Now, when we get to the end of the week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we have ah the Queen of Wands. And the Queen of Wands looks similar to the Empress just because her dress is very similar. And they both have an arm raised and they're holding a, a stick of some sort. Um, so imagery wise, these two are similar. Um, but the Queen of Wands is more, I would say she's kind of more goal and oriented, more action focused than the Empress. The Empress is the kind of woman who would love to spend an afternoon just reclining in her backyard, you know, watching the bees and smelling the roses. Whereas the Queen of Wands is 
you know, she, she likes a little more action. She would be more inclined to, you know, get out and about and do something exciting. So by the end of the week, we have this Queen of Wands energy. The Queen of Wands, I like to call her um, the ultimate, I like to call her the ultimate businesswoman because she has this entrepreneurial energy, this entrepreneurial spirit. She's very independent and she's a very powerful person when she is in the zone. And she is so creative and she loves to do things that are unconventional. So outside the box. So she's the kind of woman who would start her own business doing something totally bizarre that no one else is doing. And other people might look at that and think, oh my God, what is she doing? But she knows exactly what she's doing. And she's the kind of person who lets passion guide her. So she's not the kind of person who, you know, is content with a nine to five office job that she doesn't really care about. She's not the kind of person who's just going to go through the motions of life or do things because other people tell her that's what she's supposed to do. This is a woman who is connected to what she is passionate about, what lights her up, what fires her up. And she uses that as like an inner compass. That's her guide that helps her, you know, lead the way in her own life. That's how she makes her decisions. That how she, that's how she decides, decides what path to take, where to put her focus, where to put her energy. That's the kind of woman she is. And I feel like this card is encouraging you to do the same, for you to be like this queen of wands this weekend. You know, get in touch with what you're passionate about, what lights you up, what sparks your inner fire, and use that as your compass for making your next move. Okay, so now I'm just gonna zoom out. I'm gonna look at all of these cards together. They all, every single character is wearing a red cape here. So what I like to do is I like to look for repeating symbols, repeating patterns. And I also look for kind of like, um, I like to compare and contrast the energies of the cards. So the one thing I notice is that the figure in the 10 of wands has a red cape, which looks tattered and tired. <laughs> um, and then the empress and the queen of wands all have these red capes. And I feel like the red cape, that makes me think of like a superhero or something like that. And I think that the beginning of the week, you may start out feeling kind of tired and bedraggled and, and beaten down by life, but you get your footing pretty quickly, especially if you change your attitude and change your approach. So if the, the, the more quickly you can shift from the Ten of Wands energy where you're trying to control everything and do everything yourself um, to the energy of the Empress. The Empress is about trusting others to do what they need to do, you know, delegating, asking for help, stepping back and letting things unfold, not having this rigid agenda. And then as we get to the Queen of Wands, the Queen of Wands is a little more focused and maybe even more agenda driven than the Empress. Um, but I feel like once you get to that place, it's like you've done this, this inner work, you've stepped back, you've taken a chill pill, and now you can really kind of channel your energy and your power, which is what the Queen of Wands is all about. She's about kind of focusing your energies, whereas the Empress, the Empress is more about nurturing yourself and, and really basking in that nurturing kind of energy as opposed to the goal-oriented, focused energy. So it's like things get busy here. Maybe you get tired. You need to go inward and, and or not necessarily go inward, but you need to nurture yourself, you know, practice your self-care, whatever. And then this, this preps you for being able to really focus your energy and step and truly step into your power and and connect to your inner passion and your inner fire. So as always, I want to invite you to sit with these cards and notice what you're drawn to on the cards and notice what speaks to you. And if, if it helps you to share, feel free to share in the comment section. Um, but really take a moment. Don't just go by what I say, because uh, this is just my interpretation of these three cards. But, you know, take into account what I've said, but then also sit with these cards on your own and see if these cards 
are speaking to you? Are they saying anything specific to you? So thank you so much for watching. My name is Kate. You can find out more about tarot card reading on my website, dailytarotgirl.com. And I hope that you have a beautiful rest of your week.